Good afternoon. This is a quick uh, video which has arisen um, as a result of a comment on a previous video which started with a kind of uh, gramophone pickup. Yes, here it is. Uh, it was actually an electric pickup, much resembling an acoustic pickup, uh, but it didn't work, so I put in a piezoelectric sounder. Um, uh, I mean, you can see a wire coming out of it. And, and to our surprise, it worked quite well. And um, a couple of people wrote in. One uh, was called Charles Slater, and he suggested if it works for playing a, a flat disc, uh, would it work for a phonograph cylinder? And so I made a lash up uh, to test out whether it would work or not. Take two. Okay, there's uh, a bit of a lash up here. There's a six volt battery, a switch, um, a 298 controller a little Arduino Nano and a stepper motor and uh, we'll just very quickly look at those. Well you know we got quite interested in stepper motors and um, we, we made a video about how to get one going and there's hundreds, dozens, scores, hundreds of other videos so this isn't about how to make a stepper motor work we can already do that. One thing we are, so here's a motor, a, a NEMA 17 a regular stepper motor which is more than strong enough for the purpose of what we need and we can drive it using one of these little cheap modules which is the uh, L298N and there are videos online that show you how to wire it up um, or, or you could use one of these controllers and I've described the use of those as well with stepper motors but these are more expensive and for this quick rig that we're making the, uh, the 298N is fine and it's a lot cheaper um, and it runs on 6 volts and of course an Arduino Nano uh, or an Arduino you know whatever it is um, they'll all do and again um, how to program those it's all online uh, on the Arduino website um, so all we've got on that board there is a, a motor to drive uh, a cylinder OK, well this is a piece of plywood that was lying around and these pieces, I'm not giving any dimensions, it's something it, which will be self-explanatory there's a little block of wood there with a hole in it and then there's a 6mm bolt sticking up there and another piece of wood and uh, what we can do of course is to, obviously to put that there and then we've got a nut which we can screw on and then we've got a piece of aluminium which goes in there, it doesn't have to be aluminium, it's just there was some convenient and look on the other side here there's another block of wood that's screwed down and that can have a piece of aluminium in it as well and um, now I think uh, that's going to be the pivot where our cylinder will run uh, we've got uh, a piece of 6mm uh, steel and we've got two 6mm bearing blocks and a pulley made out of aluminium and there's another bearing block and we can put that on there on that rod it can swing about and then this bearing block will go goes down on this rod like that and now I think now it's looking something like uh, we can swing this piece in and there's also a six millimeter bolt here which you can push down and it will just locate into the surface to keep that that's rigid now we'll put it back in a minute uh, okay the next step is there's a couple of collets on here uh, and then here is a cone which I've made on the lathe just ordinary wood uh, there and we can put a cylinder on and it is taking shape here's another cone and you can put it on there like that and um, if you want to you can put a little collet like that uh, to hold it uh, in place that will require a screwdriver, it doesn't have to, have to be tight, too, too tight at all. Um, and then here comes a clever bit, this is the equivalent of a gate on a phonograph. I've got it up in the wrong way, and if you push it in like that with any look, it will go like that. And uh, if you press that in, that will locate it. And uh, behold, we've got a cylinder mounted there. Well, all we need now is a belt from going from the motor onto the uh, whoopsie daisy. Is my arm in the way? Yay! There we are. Oops, it's gone in. Ha -ha. And switch it on. 
and there we have a cylinder and it's carefully adjusted of course so the cylinder is going to about 160 rpm which is more or less the correct speed okay here's an elevated view of it and the arm is pivoted here it's a piece of balsa wood uh, and it comes out to here and it's got a little weight on the end of nut and we'll just examine here's the piezoelectric transducer but we'll have to look at that more closely here we have the piezoelectric transducer mounted on this uh, balsa wood arm i've just filed a little flat bit for it it's actually got a um, circular gasket of one millimeter plywood but that was made for another test that is not essential but as you see it's like an exaggerated version of a cylinder recorder so that we've got a vertical support bit in the middle that's made out of coca-cola tin which is very very thin easy cutting with scissors bodge a hole in it fold it in half make a little bracket and then this stylus bar here is 1.5 millimeter aluminium tubing uh, which is available surprisingly cheaply with an end there flattened with pliers stuck on with super glue a blob of super glue there and then this end is bent up and the clever bit is the actual uh, point in there which is uh, drawn out um, from glass it's a glass point um, so of course we need to see how to uh, make one of those now I was very lucky because when I was six or seven years old and at regular intervals thereafter my grandfather told me how to make glass points uh, for phonographs no kidding uh, this is just a personal memory uh, this is my grandfather he was uh, born in uh, 1882 and he's clearly in his Sunday best uh, because he worked in a factory and um, uh, he went bald quite early he told me and I'm sure this is early 1900s uh, in 1901 he was down as an engine driver and that was a stationary engine in a factory, uh, a gas engine which drove overhead shafting to drive all the machines so uh, that was what he was in 1901 and later he worked in a factory. But the point is um, in the um, early 1900s um, the phonograph cylinder and the disc, uh, the, the disc introduced in 1898 in this country, um, it was early days for the disc and the phonograph cylinders were in the ascendancy and therefore they were relatively expensive obviously one and sixpence each you see so um, that was a lot um, now uh, my grandfather and uh, some friends of his got together clubbed together and they, they there was a special deal going look I'll show you yes now there was a little phonograph uh, here's one it's called the puck uh, made in Germany I presume and it was bought in in the early 1900s and it was very cheap and um, uh, and I was looking for a photograph of one uh, and behold this photograph came up which is a puck with 12 cylinders now that is serendipity because the deal was that if you bought 12 cylinders in the early 1900s you would get the machine free thrown in I think they cost six shillings each which was the price of say four cylinders um, and so if you bought 12 cylinders the shop would blah blah blah, blah it was a deal and so the, the uh, my grandfather and friends uh, formed a little syndicate and bought the thing and um, it worked fine they, they had the machine and the cylinders they kept them a couple of days each and it was all very good uh, except for the fact that my grandfather told me this on the way back from the shop the guy went to fetch them on his bicycle um, it wasn't my grandfather, he had a basket on the front of his bicycle and he went over a bump in the road and a couple of the cylinders jumped out and of course uh, they got smashed on the, I mean they're in boxes but they still got broke but uh, that's a genuine anecdote of 1903 or 04. Uh, how to burn your hands, uh, scene one. Well you start with your blow lamp and you've got a piece of rod here which I expect is five millimeter diameter rod, a glass rod and you have your flame on and you'll notice I'm doing it sideways and you'll notice that uh, my uh, hand I'm just preheating it so it doesn't crack if you put it too far in the flame and you'll see that my you might think my thumb and finger is very close to the flame but uh, but gas uh, sorry um, glass is a very poor conductor of heat so you can do you can do it like this and you, you can guess what's going to happen it's going to get red hot you go near the hot flame and then it'll be, start bending which it is starting to do already and then as it does so normally I'd be doing it flat but uh, I can't put the camera up 
overhead. <laughs> anyway, where, I, where I'm holding it isn't, it isn't hot at all. And we shall eventually be able to draw it out into two filaments, which is going to start happening any time now. And here we are. Here we go. And we've got two, which you can't see. Right, let's do a cut. Well, I've got the points here. I tried to photograph them, but they're, they're so pointy, and of course they're transparent. But the fact remains, it goes down to a really, really tiny point. Um, and so what you will now do is put it back in the flame. And of course you've got two, two bites of the cherry. You put it down and the bit on the end will melt, uh, as, you, as you'll see. And you wait until it gets to the right size, uh, whatever that is. Right, here we go. This time you can sort of dip it in and it, there's, there's this yellow flare but um, so you can't see but there is a ball forming on the end of it and of course you keep it vertical because the ball will face downwards. Right now I'm just having a look that might be that might do so I'm going to put that one down and do be careful because glass stays hot and I'll uh, longer than you think so I'll, I'll just do, do another one now this one hasn't got such a long wand on it sort of thing so yes I think it wants to be perhaps just a whisker bigger than that right there we go um, it's hard to get this in focus because we're, we're too uh, close but this is uh, one and a half millimeter aluminium tubing which is actually a sixteenth of an inch the difference between a sixteenth of an inch and, uh, and um, one and a half millimeters is approximately zero so you can use it and we've got the hole it's smeared over because we've just uh, filed or ground it but using a pin chuck with a, uh, <coughs> with a gramophone needle in we can open the hole out in the end of the tube and so now we've got a, a nice big hole except you can't see it but we've got a hole here in the end of the tubing and so um, now you need to break off the, the point and fit it into that little tiny hole uh, okay I don't think this is going to work because I can't get in far and close enough to show you but the principle is as follows here on this scrap piece of uh, board there is one drop of super glue and I'm going to uh, look at these two um, points and I'm going to break the end of one of them off and um, you ought to do it somewhere that, where it doesn't matter uh, because um, you don't want glass powder going and I'm going to try and embed it in a uh, piece of blue tack which is on the end of a uh, cocktail stick and it, it, it is embedded I don't think you'll be able to see it here's the tube with the hole in now I now dip the end of the tube in the droplet of super glue and I now insert very carefully I could do with some more light actually uh, oh I've turned the light I'll have a go anyway I shall try and insert that in the hole And I've missed. Uh, okay, now um, what I did was I broke off and I took it uh, and uh, the, the thing and put it under the, the light which is up there and it did go in. Uh, honestly, it, yes it did. Would I lie to you? I mean, I, I mean look, making a plywood cylinder player is far too serious a matter to tell lies about, isn't it? And there we are. No, it's true. Uh, there it is. It's a bit scruffy looking, but it's got a round globular glass point in the end of the uh, aluminium thing. Of course, normally you wouldn't put the point in until you'd mounted the stylus bar on the piezoelectric transducer. But, um, aha. And it did work first time, uh, but it might well take several goes. Uh, if you drop the tiny glass thing, you've got to make another one. Anyway, that was what my grandfather taught me back in 1952 or something.
Well, it's finally time to put these grave matters to the proof, so we'll switch on and uh, let's see what happens here. <laughs> 